Uh, hi, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm a mixed media artist and I'm here to give you another sketchbook tour. But instead of a single sketchbook, I'm going to show you two sketchbooks. And um, the reason why I'm going to show you two sketchbooks is because um, I have two kinds of sketchbooks. I have what I call my pretty sketchbooks or my practice sketchbooks. Um, my these are sketchbooks that I like to um, invest a little more money in, have uh, get a little nicer paper. And then I also have my messy sketchbooks, which is usually just an expensive drawing paper. And um, this is really important to my process because I really like to have um, a space where I can just um, get out my ideas. Uh, I don't care about composition. It's just more about brainstorming um, doing little practice drawings. I'll do warm-ups in here. I write lists. It's like it's a mess It's not I don't even know if you should call it a sketchbook because there's drawings in here But there's also just a lot of words and lists and everything else, but I'm gonna show it to you because um, I think this is helpful for younger artists to understand that um, There's a process to it even though I do have sketchbooks that are filled with more finished work. I also have sketchbooks where I'm trying to figure it out and I make tons of ugly drawings. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention um, is just that these sketchbooks feel very personal to me. Um, and the reason that is is because I've tried to really keep the tone of my heart, of my heart, I guess it is my heart, but the tone of my art that comes from my heart um, I want to, to be positive and happy and I just don't want to add to any of the negativity in the world. And so my personal goal is just to make fun, happy stuff. I also gravitate towards children's book art and things like that. So I was really trying to go for that vibe. But with this sketchbook, I um, started it in January of 2020 and or both of these. I started in January of 2020 and finished around August of 2020. And so it was a crazy time. We all know that. Um, so I went through long periods of artist block. I um, fought myself because I had set out a goal for myself to make space theme art. And I ended up just drawing a lot of different feelings and uh, responses to what was going on in the world. And so these sketchbooks feel very revealing to um, what I actually think and what my stances are on a lot of divisive topics, I guess. So um, it feels a little scary because I don't want to invite that kind of criticism, but at the same time, um, these are my sketchbooks and these are who I am. So I'm going to share them with you. That's what I decided. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, oh, and I also wanted to mention, so the pro what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my um, pretty sketchbook first, and then I will show you my messy sketchbook. Um, so those who are interested can hang on till the end if you want to. And so if you do watch both of the sketchbook tours and you found it interesting, let me know. Or if you thought that the he messy sketchbook was kind of boring to look at, let me know. Um, I honestly find people's messy sketchbooks to be very interesting to look at, to see their process. So just let me know if this is interesting, if I should do this format again, because I have a lot of sketchbooks and um, my plan is to do one sketchbook tour a month until I don't have any more sketchbook tours to do. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, let's get into part one of our double sketchbook tour. Um, the sketchbook itself is an Illo brand sketchbook. It has a nice hard cover. No, I'm not sponsored, but this is my favorite sketchbook. I've been using it for the last several years. This is the 8 inch by 8 inch. I also have several 4 inch uh, mini sketchbooks. Um, and I actually have another mini sketchbook that I'll have finished soon that I'm looking forward to sharing. But anyway, um, so this sketchbook I started in um, December 30th. 2019, so like right at the beginning of the year and finished it through August 2020. Um, I When I started the year, I really wanted to fill this entire sketchbook with space themed art. Um, I thought that would be really cool and um, I had all these ideas and kind of this storyline about this little girl that's chasing this star 
and it didn't happen. Um, yeah, 2020 was a biatch and we all know it and I forgive myself, but it took me a while. I really beat myself up about this for a while, um, but that's okay. So um, this is my little space guy in a suit and in a weird way, it does kind of seem appropriate for COVID. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So immediately after I finished the sketch page after Christmas, I kind of got depressed. So honestly, even before COVID started January and February, I was feeling pretty low and, um, I didn't do a ton of art for the first couple of months of the year. And that's just honestly seasonal for me. I am not someone that looks forward to the holidays and usually kind of stresses me out and so by the time January comes around and the holidays are over I'm just kind of like go through like a little bit of a low period and that's just what it is but um so yeah in January Illinois legalized cannabis so I was one of those crazy people that went and stood in line and um it was actually a really fun time and I, we ended up chatting it up with all the people that were near us, and so when I got home, I came back and drew my little section of the line. <clears throat> and um, this one I call Catch a Star, going along with my uh, space theme here. And um, yeah, I think stars really became came to represent for me this Thing that you are aspiring to but feel like you can't reach or it seems very far away for me I would say this probably represents my desire to um, be a professional illustrator um, and yeah so I wanted to ca capture that feeling of her actually capturing the star and um, pedaling away with it and so yeah that's what this is And um, this was the first one I had completed after a couple of months, so I remember feeling very good about getting this completed. And then we're into COVID territory. Yeah, so I was trying, I decided here, I think I was trying to combine my space theme with what was going on in the world, and so I imagined what would an alien think if they flew over and saw all this, and it would probably be to keep on flying, I'd imagine. And then um, this is just, you know, I was really kind of thinking about my grandma and how she's sitting at home and feeling scared and reading the paper and no one knows what to think or what to trust. And so your imagination probably takes over. And yeah, this page got very dirty. And this, I feel like, was probably made when I was watching a lot of what was going on in New York. And it just seemed like there was so much death. And thinking a lot about how the decisions we make not only impact ourselves, but other people. And kind of like, what decision are we going to make as a country? And yeah, that's what I was thinking about. And... um this was just wanting to put some good healing vibes into the universe, I think. And I thought about making this into like a little sticker and going around town and sticking it on things, but I didn't end up doing that. And this was back to my space theme, thinking about daydreaming or dreaming, I guess. And I'm um, trying to do some lettering here. It's definitely not something I'm very good at and it's not something I have a lot of patience with for some reason. I don't enjoy drawing letters as much, but I probably should um, practice that more. And um, so this was, I was imagining that my girl would try all these different ways to try to get to her star. And one of the ways she might try would be to like fill up a bunch of balloons and with helium and float up to the star. But maybe she used too many balloons so she would keep floating past the star and have to um, try another way to get back up there. 
So that was my concept with this. I don't think it, like I really don't like the way these balloons look and I think the concept is fun, but yeah, I didn't, the colors and not the most successful. And um, this is my girl in her room. She's thinking about that star and how she can get to it. And um, this one was actually more inspired by a rainy morning. I woke up, it was rainy morning. I'm one of those people that loves rainy mornings. I think it's the most calming, most relaxing. It's the time that I love to draw the most. And so I was just kind of drawing those rainy morning vibes. And this one I call Spacey River. It's a combination of space and lazy river. <laughs> one of my most favorite things. And um, this is when the protests were happening. I remember I was having a really hard time drawing. I was at the same time thinking about trying to establish kind of a very friendly positive vibe on Instagram but we had all this kind of crazy stuff going on and so I was like fighting myself like you can't draw anything that you're not gonna post on Instagram which is ridiculous and um, but I did allow myself to just kind of draw what I was seeing and um, yeah and uh, during this time period I definitely had struggled with sleeping this very much stressed me out. I was very upset about um, a lot of the things I was seeing. And um, yeah, I call this one, can't sleep, um, draw sheep. Can you see that? And um, this one is obviously inspired by the protest and um, George Floyd and Got some dirty, I don't know, I got dirty, but yeah, um, you know, this piece, when I was drawing this piece, I was really thinking about, there's a painting by Norman Rockwell called The Problem We All Live With, and um, one of the things that strikes me about that piece is that that little girl is walking alone. She's flanked by men in front of her and behind her, but she's ultimately walking alone into that school, and I just... I always think about like how scary that would be being that little girl and how scary it would be being her parents and um, one of the things that gave me at least a glimmer of hope about the protests this last summer was that um, it, the crowd was much more diverse. Hey, uh, this is Editing Sarah. I kind of ramble here and I feel like I don't effectively communicate what I'm trying to say. So I just wanted to uh, summarize, uh, save you guys some time. And basically, um, one thing that gave me hope this year is that, um, that there are actually white people out supporting people of color. And when you see um, civil rights era images, you, you really don't see very much of that. So um, one of the things that I wanted to capture in this uh, drawing was just showing uh, white people supporting people of color. And um, that's what I want to see in the future. And it gives me hope that we are making progress. So that's all I was trying to say here. So back to the video. And um, then I just was drawing some pictures of my dog, just wanting to lighten things up and doing some more observatory drawing. And so there's a picture of my dog farting. She actually doesn't fart that much, but she does burp. And she's the only dog I've met that ever burps, but anyway. <laughs> and then this was her chasing the birds. This is her job. She makes sure the birds stay out of her yard, our yard on her watch, so. And um, we, go for walks in our neighborhood and we have a little pond um, that geese congregate around and whenever we walk up there she likes to kind of run and chase towards them and get them to fly off and um, what always makes me laugh is just thinking about how the geese are actually twice her size so I'd like to imagine if one of them stood her ground like 
she wouldn't know what to do and maybe they would end up becoming friends. <laughs> And um, yeah, I do. I drew this during Gay Pride Month. I believe love is love. Don't be a dick. Like it's none of your business what other people are doing. And life is hard enough. If you find someone you vibe with, that's who you vibe with. You know. So. And then here I was just. Um, I just filled a page of. Cats and I feel a page with dogs. I feel like there's not that much to say about it, really. <laughs> I was just um, going through some artist block and wanted to fill in some pages and keep working on things. So that's what I did here. And um, definitely still was in an art block phase here. And when I'm in art, an art block phase, I feel like... Um, one of the biggest issues is that I'm feeling very indecisive and it's just like I have a hard time settling on things to draw and I told myself just draw the stupidest thing you think of because you just want to keep practicing it doesn't matter um, quit worrying about making something cool to post on Instagram or whatever so I drew pickle puns and um, I actually think they turned out pretty cute pretty funny these are pickle pals and then um my friend said, draw some unicorns. So I drew unicorns. And um, I remember when I drew them first, I was really thinking these buck teeth were really fun. <laughs> and then after I drew them all, I realized that they looked super weird because I hadn't drawn like bottom chins on any of them. So I went and added those back in, but I don't really think it helps. And maybe it actually looked cuter without the chins, but yeah, I don't really like this page, but I do like the little tiny unicorns. Something about the little tiny ones are really funny. Okay, well, my camera shut off somewhere around here. So, um, left off with these awkward, weird little unicorns. Um, and then I made some more unicorns and I call this one an origin story of the stars. In my mind, um, stars are made by unicorns farting. So. And here I uh, started planning to launch an online shop and start making some merch and producing stickers and prints and that sort of thing. So this was brainstorming a thank you card. Um, and over here I have some more unicorns and I definitely think these unicorns started looking a lot more cute than my first two. I, obviously once you draw something a few more times you kind of get more of a flow or you can kind of you end up kind of stylizing it more in your own style and what feels natural. So, um, yeah. And more, um, this was like an idea for a birthday card and, um, it's always just, I don't know. I guess I just really find it humorous when unicorns poop cute things <laughs> or fart cute things. I don't know. And then, um, these were, I was thinking about doing, some cuss word pun stickers. I thought those would be kind of cute. And I do kind of like these, but, well, I don't really like the drawings, but I like the concept, I guess I should say. So um, it's something I might revisit in the future. And here is my annual drawing of ice cream. I feel like I pretty much end up drawing ice cream every summer when it turns warm. It's just something I really like drawing and um, it's just fun and colorful and you can get those fun melty textures with Copic markers so try it it's very fun and then here I was experimenting with a couple of things uh, for one I was looking at Gret Lusky's or I think maybe it's Greta Lusky's um, process videos and so it seems like when she um, makes her art she starts with more of a thin technical pen and then she goes and adds her brush pen just where there would be shadows so where your lines would be the heaviest and uh so i tried doing that and i don't 
I just always like my art a little bit better with the heavier lines for whatever reason, but I still think this piece is fun. And then I also experimented with, on the background, I used acrylic with a uh, fluid medium so I could, so it would, like, spread it around without um, making the color weaker. And, uh, yeah, I think this is pretty fun. The one thing that I don't love about acrylics is they always have this kind of shiny, plasticky finish. So I did actually um, recently purchase some um, acrylic gouache so it'll have like a nice matte finish. So I do want to experiment with that a little bit in my new sketchbook. And then here I decided I wanted to try to make more finished pieces. I feel like I spend so much time in my sketchbook and I don't necessarily make finished pieces. And so um, the way I decided to do that was to kind of make myself an assignment. So I would ha create a character and then I would um, create things that relate to my character and then put them together into a scene. So here I designed like uh, a Merlin character that's getting in touch with nature and he's doing some mushroom hunting. And um, this was all during quarantine, so it just seemed kind of accurate. And then, um, so I felt like this Merlin would obviously have magical plants. And then this was my finished piece. Um, I decided to that he was in his office with his plants and he was having a magical, mystical Zoom meeting. And um, yeah, I think it turned out pretty cute. Hopefully you can see that. And then I followed that same flow again, but this time I did a magician character, and these are some um, magician-y things. And then I didn't, um, I just did the other drawing in this sketchbook because um, I was excited to try to finish the sketchbook because I was so near the end. And so I did like a bookshelf scene. And I do like things about this scene, but I don't like the way I colored it. I really don't like this warm gray color that I chose. But um, it was fun just sitting there and imagining what would be on his bookshelf. I imagine that he would be a fan of Houdini and that he might have a magician girlfriend. And, you know, what would he be into? What kind of books would he read? So it's fun. And now that I'm talking about this, this makes me want to draw like a scene like that again. Um, and then here I just drew some of my favorite tools and I remember when I was drawing and I was like gosh I can't even draw a straight line but now that I look at it I really love the wonky lines I think it just adds a little something to it and I did some speckled texture over the top with Posca markers and um, then my final drawing I labeled it that feeling you get when you finish a sketchbook and it's just me holding my sketchbook and feeling happy to have completed this one and um, yeah, I this sketchbook was such a struggle to complete and I felt so frustrated and torn on what to draw and um, there was just so much going on. So I was just really happy to finish this sketchbook and um, get to start on a new one. So anyway, this is not the only sketchbook that I completed between January and August of last year. I have a second sketchbook. It's my messy sketchbook. And it has um, kind of the process of how I ended up making some of these drawings. So if you're interested in seeing my messy sketchbook, which is about 70% just mess and like 20% cute, eh, maybe 10% cute stuff. I don't know. We'll see. You, you tell me. But uh, yeah, this would be a good time to go to the bathroom, grab a refreshment and a snack, and then come back. Join me for sketchbook two. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you're still hanging in there. This is my um, messy sketchbook. Um, I always complete at least two sketchbooks at a time. So I always have a Strathmore sketchbook like this to just get ideas out. It's really important to me. And maybe this is the only kind of sketchbook you need. Maybe you only need a messy sketchbook 
and then you create more like finished bigger pieces. Um, I like to have a messy sketchbook and then I like to go into a nicer sketchbook and this would be like phase two and then if I like something in here I would say I would recreate it digitally or recreate it on you know a nice piece of watercolor paper or whatever so um phase one phase two phase three is you know a more finished piece so anyway um messy sketchbook these mostly overlap um I actually started this one a little bit sooner um than my other sketchbook in this tour um but they overlap pretty well uh like I said this is a Stradmore I think I said that already it is a 9 by 12 this is my favorite size and um I usually use it sideways I like that it's um that it's ring bound so that it's just easy to flip and draw on a page so um anyway let's get into it um these are some really messy sketches for um, in December of 2019, I did a holiday Christmas themed sketchbook and I, I think I did like 15 or so drawings in it and then I left that sketchbook because it like absorbs my Copic markers and was kind of falling apart. But yeah, so these were um, a Christmas story. I was going to do some um, sketches of that and then uh, these are some very loose ugly sketches for a family vacation I do think she looks cute is I think her name is that Aunt Bethany and she comes and she has a package and it's like meowing or whatever I just think that's funny and uh, more ugly sketches for um, a family vacation and um, how are we going to do this? It's not all in the way. We'll just have to leave it up there. Okay. Um, so just, I don't know, Christmassy stuff. There's going to be like, I usually, well, this looks like a workout routine. I think I was actually still taking care of my body then, <laughs> pre-COVID. Pre <laughs> yeah, I'll have like a lot of just lists, whatever, planning, thinking about, um, this was planning my first page in my sketchbook. I was initially going to do like feeling spacey or do something like fun in the um, like some lettering in it. But I ended up covering it over with black because like I, uh, I'm not very confident in my lettering. And um, well, here's some Yodas. Um, I decided to do like a Yoda drawing for my friend Chris who's really into Star Wars so these were some little practice sketches I did, and um, I dropped it off to them a while back. And then these were like thumbnail sketches for the um, Catch a Star spread in my other sketchbook. And um, some more thumbnails for that first page. And some more thumbnails. Sometimes I jump around from ideas, so I started doing some thumbnails for like Spacey River and some of these other ideas, and then I did some more thumbnails. I, I think I was thinking about doing a spread in my sketchbook, but I must not, I didn't do it. And then this is just marks on a page. Um, one thing I really struggled with um, in that Catch a Star spread was I really wanted that side view of her. I just thought so you could really see that star, and I wanted like that stardust messiness coming out from being behind her but when you look at like references for these um tricycles they're always in like front three-quarter view because that's like the most flattering view of things and like where you can see everything and so um looking back at it now i probably should have like stuck with a three-quarter and maybe like had the star coming out behind her or something but yeah and uh these were quick sketches for that um, sunny side cannabis uh, spread I did. And uh, just random stuff, ideas I had. Um, I don't even know. I think that was something from Pinterest. Lists and weird loose, loose sketches. 
I think I was really excited to be honest because um, cannabis <laughs> was legal and I was like, I'm going to make cannabis stickers because I'm so excited about this. <laughs> so give me a... Give me a leaf emoji in the comments if you uh, if you agree. <laughs> um, yeah, more ideas, lists, lists. Drawing like retro ladies smoking. These were um, some really loose drawings. I was watching a lot of news, so I think that's like Michael Moore and. <laughs> Um, Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. I think that's Bernie Sanders, but I don't think that looks like Bernie Sanders. It looks more like Jay Leno or something. A mad scientist. And uh, this is a guy from Pinterest that I just copied down. Sometimes I like to just do warm up sketches and I'll just find something I like on Pinterest and then it'll just be a good way to like warm up, you know? And these are some more like um, political type sketches. And that's Pence and Trump, and I'm not sure who that is. Uh, more political. Very loose. Sometimes I, in my head, I'm like, I get, because I, I do watch a lot of the news. I'm like, I should make political art. And then I'm like, no, I want to make happy art. <laughs> and so I end up just doing these, like, weird little sketches in here. But, um... I don't know. To me, it was just like, it was like during the Democratic primary and it was Joe Biden versus Bernie at that point. And it was just, um, just had this image of my head of these like two very old men in a boxing ring. This was, so my friend on Facebook was doing the, uh, one of those music challenges, like soundtrack of your life type of thing. And like all my friends were doing it. And so I just, um, I was like, ooh, maybe that would be a fun, fun drawing challenge. So I was going through and just like thinking about a lot of different songs and um, groups that I liked throughout the years. I didn't ever end up doing anything with that. Um, mm. Oh, I think that was a sketch that ended up, these both ended up in that sketchbook, I think. I don't. Not sure what that is. Who knows? I think I, I was here. I was thinking about maybe like doing an alphabet book and trying to come up with like rhymes for an animal alphabet book. I always come back to this idea of doing an alphabet book. So maybe I should just do it because I really want to be able to complete a children's book. But... I think, like, I don't, I feel intimidated by the writing part, so I feel like that would be something that maybe I could do. And, um, this was just a guy I saw in the news. You know what? It's, it's one of the things that's been interesting about watching the news in the, uh, Zoom era, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, is everyone, like, zooming in from their homes is, like, it's interesting to see people's homes and their backgrounds and what they include and who pays attention to what's in their background and who doesn't. And I just remember this guy had like this really creepy porcelain doll <laughs> in his, on a, in his uh, shelf in the background. It just like caught my attention. And uh, some kind of space theme sketches that uh, you might recognize from the first sketchbook. And this was thumbnails for, um, I guess I'll just move this out of the way. I wanted it to be aesthetic. Did you enjoy that? Well, it's in the way, so I'm going to move it. Okay. So, um, yeah. And this is my thumbnail sketch for uh, the scared little old lady. And I did a thumbnail sketch for the uh, Earth drawing as well. Weird tales, witchy folk tales. I think I was brainstorming maybe doing um, a book of like classic fairy tales or weird fairy tales or something like that. I really want to complete a children's book and I just never, I just have a hard time settling on something because you know that you're going to have to work on it for so long. And I think I just need to choose something and work on it and finish it and um, just accept that that's what, you know, I just choose something. 
anyway, these were thumbnails for, I was thinking about doing uh, Sleeping Beauty. So I was doing some thumbnails and thinking about how I would separate out the text. And um, these were all the little fairy characters. In Disney, there's only three fairies. But in the story, I think there's like 12 fairies or something. A lot more. And these were sketches. I was kind of envisioning um, kind of a scene where you had like this big round table with all this food piled up and then you had all the fairies around um, the happy couple with baby Aurora. And I did do a drawing of that. Um, maybe I'll grab it and show it. Um, these were for the six fan arts challenge. So one of the fan arts that I did was of, um, the toadstool guy and I did a Yoda and I did Alice. These are more sketches and thumbnails for, um, doing like a sleeping beauty themed. This one I thought like um, you could just show people's hands and like all the food and the decadence around them and then have like the title in there. I think that'd be like a cool kind of like cover or like title page design. There's more sketches for my uh, Alice fan art and um, practicing my uh, Sleeping Beauty, Baby Aurora. And more Baby Aurora, and um, yeah, I spent a lot of time on this, didn't I? It, this did, I did uh, I did a drawing outside of my sketchbook. I guess I will go grab it since there's so much of this in here. See if I can find it. If I can find it, I'll grab it and show it. You see it? Not focusing. Um. Yeah, so those were thumbnails thinking about having um, her like in the middle with the fairies all around her. And so I thought one way you could kind of really p put the focus on her was maybe all the fairies are kind of green and she's wearing red and just playing around. Trying to, f oh, can you even see that? So. <clears throat> oh, this was also for my six fan arts. I did uh, Ratatouille, but I did him as the Salt Bay. <laughs> And these were um, coming up with characters for my Sleeping Beauty drawing that I did. Or Sleeping, yeah, Sleeping Beauty. Um, oh, I guess I did Poppy for one of my uh, six fan arts. So that was a practice. And then trying to, playing around with, uh, I guess blowing up those thumbnails earlier, I guess these would be roughs, <laughs> and trying to figure out the color scheme, would it be, should they be green, should they be pink, I kind of like the idea of all the colors being, or all the fairies being one color, a little fairy drawing, I think I copied this one from Pinterest, I don't think that's um, my idea, and um, I can't remember the name of this movie, but if you've seen it, then you'll know Probably the character's name is Christmas. Yeah, but it was a it was a cute movie, and uh, it appealed to me too because I'm really was really into the uh, star space stuff at the time. Here's more thumbnails. Here was a little thumbnail for that uh, daydreaming or de dreaming drawing I did in my other sketchbook, and. Uh, yeah, as I look at some of these thumbnails, I'm like, those are that would still be a fun idea. Here's like a little character uh, with a sword kind of fighting some bubbly, I don't know, some sort of dragon thing. Okay. I always um, look at, there's that picture, I don't know what the movie's from, but uh, there's always this picture from this old movie of this lady with the, uh, whoa, of this lady with a star crown type of thing. It's like, why? I don't know. It's cool. I find it inspiring. Mm, yeah. Sometimes I just, uh, make a few marks and you've just got to start with a fresh page. You just do that. And, uh, 
These were my thumbnails for Spacey River and also the the, the balloon one. And um, I was trying to figure out the color because I wanted to, I liked the blue with the yellow, but that feels just like a beach scene. So if I wanted space, I needed to either do black or these purpley space colors. Um, I think I was think writing out my I kind of my thoughts in my kind of an outline for my um space theme story that I had in my head. And I don't remember what the name of this show was. I think there was only one season, but I thought it was really cute. Um I'll add subtitles because I can't remember names of anything. Mm. Oh yeah, so I was still thinking about my that my life and songs challenges and trying to do it as a drawing challenge, which I never did. Um, I think the Jerry Garcia "Touch of Gray." I used to love that song. Me and my friend Sam used to listen to that song over and over again. Um, these are sketches for that actually went into another sketchbook. I have a mini sketchbook that's just moving TV themed, and so. These are sketches for a, um, some Goonie. I did a couple of um, Goonie spreads. And I think I was thinking about doing big, but I haven't done that one in there yet. During this time, um, I remember I was having a really hard time um, drawing. And so the music challenge sparked an idea. And I was like, what about if I thought about all my favorite movies from when I was a kid? And I was like, I'm going to turn off news and turn on these like safe movies that I enjoyed as a kid. So I went and started finding and rewatching a lot of the movies that I liked when I was a kid. So um, one of my favorite movies was Never Ending Story. I just, that's a, it's a weird movie. If you, as I rewatch it now, it's very, it's a pretty intense story. Like, and I, and I discovered that all my favorite uh, movies as a kid were very magical, but also intense. So... Yeah, and of course there's Falcor from Never Ending Story. Some sketches of uh I can't remember their names. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. And some more sketches for the Goonies um spread. Uh I'm about I'm more than halfway through my movie sketchbook, and I'm looking forward to sharing that one when I get it done. Um I the I had the hardest time with um this, uh, what's his name? Corey? <laughs> One of the Corys? But I, I do really like um, him. I think he's cute. More sketches. Um, thumbnail sketches for my movie sketchbook of Goonies. This is a thumbnail from Willow. <laughs> I still love that movie. And this one was still entertaining and I never did you know what maybe this will be my next sketch in my movie sketchbook because uh yeah these were some warm-up sketches for that um rainy morning page I did in my other sketchbook and actually I like this thumbnail better than I do the actual finished piece like the looseness and the brush strokes and yeah Um, random sketches. I wore out the word Inktober. I was probably thinking about Inktober, probably. Let the soup simmer. <laughs> um, that's good advice. If you have an idea and you can't quite figure it out, just let it simmer. I think that's what I was trying to tell myself. <clears throat> just let it simmer. And, um... I was writing out a little schedule here, I guess. Some Spider-Man sketches I was doing for a friend. I am not good at drawing men, and uh, I've been drawing little people for so long, I feel like I'm not that good at drawing like more muscular anatomy. I've never been that good at drawing that kind of anatomy, so then I switched to making a little Spider-Man. That's more my zone, I feel like. <clears throat> A little thumbnail sketch. I, that's the that's the idea I ended up going with. And then I did some little Batmans and signed my name a whole lot. <laughs> and 
and uh, I don't know what I was brainstorming. Hmm. I don't know. There's a Yoda. More baby Yodas. This I was, um, I thought about doing some little like family portraits of my friends that have kids and stuff, but I never got around to it. I'm a jerk. I just work on my own stuff for myself, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, oh, this, this little drawing here, um, <laughs> I was over at my grandma's house and, uh, they have this little, uh, she has this birdhouse, but it has like these tiny little, um, holes in it where they go in and out and we were just joking that it has to be so hot in there and that and so we we're just kind of envisioning them at, sitting in there in like a sauna with like little towels around their neck so that's I know that that's probably a lot to conjure from that sketch but that's what I remember I'm storming for that and these were some I guess some warm-ups of that pickle page I ended up doing and uh ice queen I think that's cute I kind of want to make that into a sticker Um, yeah, I actually like this little doodle better than the one that I did in my sketchbook. I think the, the, if you didn't recognize it, this is clearly Ron Burgundy, Will Ferrell, Anchorman. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> I used to love that movie. And, um, yeah, this little sketch turned out better than the, one of my sketchbooks is really ugly. And then, um brainstorming some little unicorns and how I wanted to draw them. More unicorns brainstorming. These were, I was just writing out um, whatever cuss word puns I could think of for that cuss word pun page I did in my other sketchbook. And um, these are copies of from I Hate Fairyland. That is a comic book by Scotty Young, and it's uh, I love that comic book. And in fact, it's the I didn't read comic books, but I found I Hate Fairyland, and I just love that combination of colorfulness and kind of like the sarcastic humor to it. It's like that combination of light and dark almost. I don't know. I just love that um, comic book, and it made me want to read comic books and find other comics like it and it really inspires me. I just love that comic. And so here I was thinking about like uh how as a little kid during COVID if you wanted to get ice cream from the ice cream man then you'd have to use one of those reacher grabber tools to get the ice cream from him. And uh here I was thinking about like drawing and having like kind of like these imagination things coming up. And these are more loose sketches for those cuss word puns that I was thinking about. And uh, thumbnails of the ice cream drawing I did. And yeah, that's it. That concludes this second part of the sketchbook tour. So I'll meet you at the outro. Well, hey there. Uh, you made it to the end of a very long video. So I think that officially makes us friends. So you should probably subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos, which I post every other Sunday. So meet me back here in two weeks. And if you miss me between now and then, you can always find me on Instagram at by Sarah Simpson. And until next time, keep on arting in the real world. Bye.